Hi guys. How are you? I just want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a really Happy New Year. Um, but I also want to talk about some things too. New Year's is definitely a time of reflection for a lot of people. I'm sure it's not just for me. Um, when we think about our pasts, our futures, our hopes and defeats, what we can do to be better, what we should have done. It's not an easy time for a lot of people. A lot of TV shows make it seem like it's this magical thing, but it's not always the most magical thing. For me, this year has been unbelievably a lot of upside, ups and downs, excuse me. Um, nothing like 07, and I pray that nothing will ever be like 2007's year. Um, but I definitely did go through a lot of pain also. And I just wanted to share with you. One of the things I wrote on April 26th, 2013, so it was a while ago. April 26th was the day I found the biological parents in 2007. And six days later, that's when Crown Hospital happened. So, April 26th is kind of the day I start to feel a little, a lot more sad and you know, leads down to that. I'm sorry for the little bit of background noise, my chinchilla is being a little obnoxious, so sorry. Alright, so I titled this one called Where Do Things Go Wrong? It's that time of year again. Memories return, flashbacks occur, tears flow and I diminish. I feel that every May is like a time machine experience for me. I transform back into the terrified, desperate, shattered 12-year-old girl that I was and stay there. I'm 18 years old and I still cringe, breathe, and feel nauseous when I hear the words Carney Hospital. Even reflecting on the memories made me feel ill. In May, time freezes, and so does my world. It's a time that flashbacks dominate my life, but it is also a time to mourn. It's time that flashbacks... I mourn, I mourn the loss of my innocence and happiness. I mourn the loss of my Uncle Daniel dying from cancer in May 2008. I mourn the loss of Sharon, who was so close to me. I mourn the loss of my godmother's father's death, in May 2007, and now I feel devastated by my last year's suicide attempts and sad hospitalizations in May 2012. In May, many questions crossed my mind. Questions like, why did adults want to hurt me? How could someone even take pleasure in a child's pain? Why was I betrayed by the people who loved me? And even just a general question, why? My life drastically changed in May 2007. My view of the world was never the same. I'm devastated because the spring used to be an extremely happy and exciting time for me. I used to bolt out the door smiling and quickly sat upon my swing. I'm devastated because spring will never be the same. I felt warm, safe, and the world was a beautiful place. Skies were blue, grass bright green, puffy clouds soft. Gentle breezes made me feel so alive when I'd take in the sun's warmth. I'd play outside for hours with pure joy in my soul. Flowers blossomed with gorgeous colors, and God's creatures would emerge out of the darkness of the winter. My heart was filled with genuine love and kindness. What happens? Where did things go wrong? It happens so fast. I'm crushed. I now dread and despise the spring. Where is the world I knew? I wish I spent more time in the good and safe world. I was yanked out of it too soon. I miss my old self, too. When I look to the pictures of myself when I was younger, before age 12, I see a wide, genuine smile and a bright gleam in my eye. I seem so energetic and happy. If I looked into a crystal ball when I was a child and saw what was going to happen to me, I would have immediately denied it. I'd never believe it. Even now, an 18-year-old girl, I still have a difficult time coming to terms with it. It just feels so unreal, but I obviously know what happens. I remember everything so clearly. Every little detail. I cannot deal with this intense pain. 
That was the journal entry I had from April 26, 2000, to 2013. And you know, this pain lasted a very, very long time throughout the years. Even now, it's time of reflection um, brings back memories of crime and hospital. That was nice. This is a drawing I made in July 2012, so we're going a little bit further back too. But this one never, um, for some reason, just never left my mind. This RIP, and talk to 1995 to 2012, rest forever. It's on the bubble. Says, if happy little bluebirds fly beyond the rainbow, why, oh why, couldn't I? For many years, I've dreamt of escape. 2013, I did try to escape through suicide attempt as well, but now that I'm in college, I really want to try to make something out of my degree and move forward. So I think that's something I'll be reflecting on too this time of year is how to move forward, not from necessarily climbing, because I don't think I'm ever going to move past that. I'm going to be straight up honest about that. Um, but what can I do to make sure that nothing like this ever happens to anyone else? I would, I could not imagine having to see anyone go through what I went through. I would not wish it on my worst enemy. I don't really have enemies, but you know, you understand what I mean. I mean, it had to be one of the most difficult times. You know, I think, excuse me, I apologize, it was the worst time of my life. I mean, probably nothing like that ever happens again. And every New Year's, that's something I would always fear. Would I go back to Carnegie Hospital? 2013 is the first year that I actually don't have that gear. And that is because I'm 18 years old. So if they tried to put me in Carnegie Hospital, Number one, I wouldn't even be on the unit I was on because I'm an adult. Number two, I'd be able to sign myself out. So, as awful as it would be to sit up and incarnate once again, I wouldn't have to stay there and be worried. So that fear is gone. And I always promised myself years ago if I ever sent foot in Carnegie's hospital again, I would kill myself. I don't have to worry about that anymore. And now it's my turn to protect those who can't protect themselves. That's my duty now, since I survived everything I went through. I hope that you take it as responsibility yourself, too, to stand up for abused people who cannot defend themselves, especially those who are under the age of 18, who don't have as much power. Abuse is horrible. Anyone can abuse anyone at any age. It makes you feel very powerless. But I mean, by legally, you know, under 18, you cannot do that much. Please. Around this Christmas season, New Year season, think about that. I trust all of you, since you all are very good people. I'm sure who are watching this took this time to watch it. And I pray for the people who are being abused now. They cannot defend themselves and want that beautiful Christmas season. I will not stop praying for them. I will not stop fighting for them either. Thank you.